Hey everyone, and welcome to Tony for... I mean Tony for you. Mastema without a doubt is one of the most loved demons with his portrayal and design in SMT with the least known about his origins. Mastema, whose name means hostility, is without a doubt an agent of Yote Vode, but the ways he brings about his will is distinct from any other law-aligned figure. Able to bring about great misfortune to those who stray from God's light, as well as a powerful ally to those of the faith, Mastema is always present in the affairs of humans and in very interesting places considering his angelic status. With information dating back to the 7th century, accounts of Mastema are infrequent, but intense. Let's learn about this enigmatic angel of disaster and why God allows evil in this world. This video was made possible by the great people over at my Patreon. If you'd like to support, check the link in the description below. Mastema's inception is unknown for sure, but many believe he is an angelic being known as a Watcher. Watchers are a group of angels who fell from heaven onto earth as written about in the Book of Enoch. The Book of Enoch is a series of stories compiled into one text, dating back to potentially the 1st century CE. Some of the stories are even found in the Dead Sea Scrolls, one of the earliest surviving manuscripts of Biblical canon. The first book of Enoch describes how these watchers descended from heaven to intermingle with the daughters of men, and to give birth to what are known as Nephilim, or giants. Mastema himself is believed not to be among those of his race who were tempted by Lucifer and the pleasures of earth, forsaking his people to remain at God's side. This race of fallen angels led by Shemyaza, along with their children, the Nephilim, wreak havoc on earth with the Nephilim killing men and devouring them, as well as killing all beasts and drinking their blood. The Watchers themselves are described as experts in evil arts, with Azazel teaching them to craft tools of war from iron, Shemyaza teaching them sorcery, and Kokabiel teaching them signs of the stars. As the Watchers and their children destroyed the earth and dragged the people to evil, eventually the whole of humanity cries out for help from God. In response, God sends out his four archangels to restore peace on earth. Uriel was sent out to warn Noah of the oncoming flood from God, Raphael was sent to imprison Azazel and cast him into darkness, and Michael was sent to imprison the leader of the Watchers, Shemyaza. Gabriel was sent with destroying the Nephilim. This task was specifically said with hatred not seen often by God, with him saying, Go, Gabriel, to the bastards, to the half-breeds, to the sons of miscegenation, and destroy the sons of the Watchers from among the sons of men. God held particular contempt for those who would debase the faith and purity of his children, going so far as to cast them all into the pits of hell, but not without warning them first. Enoch, the great-grandfather of Noah, was sent to tell the watchers of their misdeeds and warn them of their impending destruction. That's as much as we can get from the Book of Enoch, but it's far from the end of Mastema's story. The Book of Jubilees, sometimes called Lesser Genesis, is an ancient Jewish text containing records of Mastema's role on earth, considered canonical by the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. After the flood, God is ready to destroy all the demons, but Mastema intervenes, beseeching God to allow him to retain control over one-tenth of the demons in order to exercise his authority. Mastema justifies his request with controlling them to corrupt and lead astray before his judgment, because the evil of the sons of men is great. From this, we can understand that it was shown from the Watchers and the Nephilim that humans are easily corrupted and capable of great evil, even on par or surpassing demons. To prevent an event like this from happening again, with the permission of God, Mastema wishes to control the temptation of humans to root out the weak and evil. Mastema is a tempter of men, with God's permission, and is assumed to be responsible for much of the hardship characters in the Bible go through. He's responsible for the twelve tests of Abraham, completely uprooting his life, witnessing the horror of Sodom and Gomorrah, and culminating in the sacrifice of his son Isaac, all at the behest of Mastema and God. Mastema even goes so far as to aid the Egyptian priests that opposed Moses, destroying the land with the plague of birds, and even chased after them when they escaped in search of the land of milk and honey. Despite all this, no test was too great for the faithful to overcome, and each one of them led to triumph and reward from God. Mastema went on to unleash the Ten Plagues of Egypt, which allowed the Israelites to escape slavery. After receiving the Ten Commandments and facing many more trials, Moses sees the Promised Land and dies, revered for all time. Abraham, for all his hardship, after resolving himself to sacrifice his son, was stopped at the last moment. An angel, who we can assume is either Mastema or Metatron, appeared before him and spoke, Because you have obeyed me and not withheld your son, I swear by my own name that I will bless you. I will multiply your descendants beyond number, like the stars in the sky. And from your descendants, all nations of the earth will be blessed, all because you have obeyed me." Abraham's lineage later went on to father Jesus Christ and the prophet Muhammad. 
Mastema being depicted in this way draws parallels to the book of Job. The book begins with the story of God speaking to his angels, where he speaks of his servant Job, describing how virtuous he is in reverence for God and the spurning of evil. His life was blessed with a large family and immense wealth, but he continually gave offerings to God early in the morning to make up for any sin his family may have done. After God spoke so highly of this man, an entity appeared only referred to as the Satan. Satan in those times was a Hebrew word meaning the opposed, so it was not so much a name as it was a title given to those who opposed God in one aspect or another. Satan as he is here is an angel seated directly under God's throne, and could not have been the Lucifer we all know, but we'll definitely talk more about that in another video. The Satan argues with God that Job is not a virtuous man because he is good, but because God has blessed him beyond any other in the land. Satan explains that if God takes away the blessings given to Job, that he will curse God to his face. God had full faith in Job, and gave the man's entire life to Satan to do with as he pleased. Everything Job worked for came crashing down, with messenger after messenger coming to his house telling him that his servants were killed and livestock either stolen or burned up by the fires of heaven. Satan even went so far as to kill Job's children as they were eating in their home by collapsing it in on them with a great wind. Despite losing everything he held dear, Job knelt before God and said, The Lord gave and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Satan changed his angle in torturing Job, and instead of targeting his family, he targeted him directly, cursing him with boils from head to toe. Job's friends even started to believe he must have committed a great sin in order to deserve such horror in his life. Eventually, the book comes to a head where Job demands God defends his reasoning for torturing him so, and God does. God explains everything on earth is part of a grand design, beyond the comprehension of man, and makes no mention of Satan. Job is left with humility and faith in God restored. With the final test passed, Job was restored double what he lost. Mastema is widely considered to be one of the angels either temporarily or permanently labeled as Satan, so Mastema being the Satan figure is extremely likely. Mastema is considered the father of all evil and flatterer of God. After the flood, he controls the evils of men as a cold and calculated punisher of humans and serves a very similar role to that of Satan. Mastema may seem evil at first with his proclivity to tempt humans towards the path of evil and bring about calamity, but it's entirely possible he's responsible for the rooting out of pure evil. We don't hear about the stories of those who fell to the temptations of Mastema, but we can assume nothing good comes from it as they are disposed of so as to prevent another calamity. Mastema's temptations and trials are horrific and life-changing, but the rewards might not seem amazing all things considered. The reward for following God's path and not falling to temptation are never rewards given to the person that would immediately help them or make their life easier. Abraham never got a tangible reward, and Moses died mere moments before he could enter the land of milk and honey his people were promised. The rewards are much more long-term and symbolic. Moses, after leading his people through countless hardships, blood, sweat, and tears were shed to get where they needed to go, and it was nothing short of a miracle. At the end, his reward was death, which doesn't seem much like a reward, but to this day, Moses is remembered as one of the most important and virtuous biblical figures, second only maybe to Jesus Christ. Abraham went through unimaginable pain both mentally and physically, and after resolving himself to give up everything he loved, he was promised that his family and descendants would be blessed by God himself. Neither Abraham nor Moses would live to see their impact on the world, but undoubtedly their sacrifice made the world a better place for the rest of time. Mastema in Shin Megami Tensei is not an overutilized character, only playing a role in Shin Megami Tensei 4, 4 Apocalypse, and Strange Journey. Despite his lack of appearances, he plays an incredibly important role in each game he features in. In SMT4, Mastema is working with the Ashura Kai, the de facto leaders of Tokyo after the dome was erected. When the samurai approach him, Mastema has no intention of fighting. In fact, he gives them valuable information on Tayama's secret dealings with the red pills and even takes down a barrier blocking their way forward. When questioned, Mastema explains that what Tayama is doing, appeasing the demons by harvesting human brains, is the will of God. Whether he actually believes this or is using it to tempt them is unknown. In the neutral path, Mastema commends the player for choosing a path of neither angels or demons, seeing it as admirable, even if it means suffering will continue on earth. Mastema extols the same virtues we've come to understand him holding, with doubt being an opportunity to have your faith bolstered. In the DLC mission Clipped Wings, Mastema even summons Flynn to defeat the four archangels due to their intention to kill all humans not chosen by God. From this, we can understand he does value human life, and thinks humans should be tested and given fair trials before being condemned. 
Mastema's most important role is in Strange Journey, where he claims to have been sent by God after hearing of the great calamity facing humans, expressing great interest in Zelenin, the law rep of the game, and the protagonist. The angel shows up at perfect times when the crew are faced with mortal danger and guides them to safety. Mastema's true feelings about humanity are revealed after some time, as he explains how complete submission to God is preferable to the free will of humans, and fights to make his kingdom come about by either aiding the player in the law route or combating the player in the chaos route. In the neutral route, he simply bides his time, as the coming of the next Schwarzwelt is inevitable. Whether the trials the player and the crew face is a direct cause of Mastema is unknown for certain, but we do know he is powerful enough to ascend humans to angelic forms, choosing to reward the faith of Zelenin with this gift. Everything Mastema says and does is part of a grand plan to expose evil, and we know very little of his true intentions. What we do know is he values submission to God above all else, and believes humans are capable of great virtue as well as great sin. Mastema never jumps to conclusions, and tests all fairly and equally, but in the end, believes free will only leads to suffering. Whether his quest to bring about the Kingdom of Light is carried out though is up to the player. Mastema's design is that of a dark-skinned angel with jet black wings, black hair and a large face mask. His large robe comes to a point above his head, partially obscuring the halo surrounding it. An amazing design to represent his true nature, hidden by a facade of evil. Well, that covers Mastema, one of my favorite demons in the whole series. This was a lot more in-depth than I first thought it would be, but I had a ton of fun learning more about him. Let me know your thoughts on the lore of Mastema in the comments down below. And while you're down there, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Special thanks to Corey Summers, Frankie Stoned, Mr. Eight Eyes, Rex Prime, and many others for supporting the channel. If you really enjoyed, consider supporting the channel on Patreon and getting your name at the end of every video along with some other cool stuff. Mastema was voted one of the most popular demons in Shin Megami Tensei, and I can understand why. He can be an incredibly powerful ally or your worst enemy, and now, after knowing much more about him, I hope you can all love him a little bit more. Thanks for watching this SMT lore video, and I'll see you in the next Tony for You. Have a good one.